these streets, our streets and roadways and highways are agnostic. They are neutral. They are equally able to transport what's toxic and what's terrific. These folks could be on their way to some, doing something amazing. They could be filled with sadness. They could be anywhere in between. This is the power and this is the danger and this is the reality of our life. Ours is a world with freedom of speech and with trillions and maybe trillions and trillions of ways to voice that freedom and all what we think. This is complex. Now in the face of the complex, in all of its boundlessness, people, we attempt to simplify it, to make easy pathways through it all. We're overwhelmed and we want ease. Never mind that this is just not the case. And we shouldn't fall for it. In his own time of expansion and explosion, Martin Luther used faith and Christian freedom. And I want you to note that, that I said Christian freedom, which we shouldn't always conflate with good old regular freedom, but I've digressed. Luther used faith and Christian freedom as a guide. These were his map. They were flexible and fecund. And his course was stacked upon Christ. Paul and Romans, and probably most especially Romans 13, were influences on Luther and on the map that he has drawn for us through all of this complexity. Romans 13 was a big deal to Luther. For instance, at the tail end of the small catechism, Martin included a household chart, a directing way, a map for us to use in order to sally forth into the complexity and into creation and into the cosmos itself. And here at the tail end of the small catechism, Luther quoted Romans 13. Be subject to the governing authorities, Luther wrote. By the way, the Bible that Luther is stacking upon and that we read to this day is an enormously complex book in and of itself that is often, uh, maybe too often, uh, simplified or seemed to be simplified. No, this book is rife with politics and with chaos. And maybe Romans 13 that Luther is citing be subject to the governing authorities is the most direct place in scripture where we are directed or given a map on who we are as political beings. Much of the Bible is more subtle than this, but maybe you can hear it. Be subject to the governing authorities. But did I mention how complex and how noisy and how neutral the world is, how agnostic these pathways we journey are. Because Luther, and if you want to hear complexity, hear this. Luther, who said that we should be subject to the governing authorities and is quoting scripture when he writes that, is the very man who defied the most powerful governing authorities of his own day. Here is a man, and if this isn't complex, I don't know what is, who can direct us to be subject to the governing authorities, who his own name and his own legacy has been made by defying them. Life is complex. Our application of who God is and God's word is a difficult thing. It's not simple or codified, no matter how many people will try to tell you that it is no matter how much we think it should be easier, and no matter how much we want it to be this way. Life is agnostic, and this makes it complex. But I wonder, what if this complexity is actually the beauty of life? 
maybe this is why the Bible, why Paul, and why Luther, and why we still talk about these things. Because God is still inspiring us and guiding us to this very day. In these things, we are directed by God. In them, we are developed and we are grown in faith. And God sets a road for us and a road for others. This is about revelation. This is about salvation. This is life and this is faith. Our streets themselves, whether in real time or whether it's the highway of the internet, they're agnostic. The pathways are pathways and roadways of toxicity and salvation and they are the bringers of everything in between these two things. It's so much, it's so fast, it's so loud that the great temptation for us is to try to simplify it and control it and to tame it and to sound as knowledgeable as possible. We want to rush or fantasize or fanaticize. We want it to be rules and simplified things. But not one of us, none of us, is as smart as we think we are. There is simply too much here. It's bigger than us. Have you ever noticed how no amount of study or information actually ever solves everything? Have you ever noticed how the problems that we talk about now are problems that have in one way or another existed at another time? The issues that we have today are at their core the same as issues that have been around for days and days and years. Perhaps all we are and all we can do, whether it's through reading Romans, whether it's gathering, whether it's digital or in person, perhaps all we can do in caring for one another is not trying to simplify it and forcing others to simplify it or believe our simplified patterns. No. Perhaps all faith is, is an embracing of complexity. Maybe in the embracing and the experience of how big creation and the cosmos is, we know that only God can deliver and guide and keep us. All we can do is pray and read and care and do the best that we can do. But we can't say that we solve it or simplify it because God does that. You and I are specks in the torrent, but in Christ we are saved and we are sustained specks. What God knows and what the Bible knows as God's voice is that our lives are not simple but complex. These things know that we hold many roles and ride along many streets at the same time. And these things know that the rules may not always apply in the same way twice. But God has a plan, and God has salvation for all of this. Faith is a conversation. It's a conversation with the possibility of it all. It is an application of order down to the nanosecond. Our salvation, as it's talked about in Romans, is something that we should not be ashamed of because it is freeing. God does not eliminate possibility. God brings us through it. Stay safe and know that in the midst of all this complexity, God loves us, embraces us, and keeps us.